Welcome to Epilogue Podcast, the show where we discuss some stuff that happened on a different show ages ago which nobody really cares about anymore. Hi, I'm Point Punky. And I'm LeBlanc. Today we are discussing Farscape Season 1, Episode 16, A Human Reaction. John finds out what it would be like to return to Earth. How did you find this episode? This makes two episodes in a row that I love. Um, yep. I can understand. It's a good one, I think. What do you like about it? Um, it's nice to see all the alien language from the start. Return, translator microbes. Ah, yeah. That's something I thought we would never hear again because of the microbes. Yep. And then they ditched them for that one episode where John visits that planet that's sort of like Earth. And they sh we should be hearing alien noises, but then we don't. They they've played a bit fast and loose with the rules, but here it's full sci-fi alien languages um the suspicions of the humans um all that kind of military aggression stuff it's a sort of classic sci-fi plot line aliens come and then the military act like complete jerks and ruin everything right but this time well here it starts off with them being suspicious of someone that is their own. That's different than how it usually goes. It's usually wholly alien where there's no connection. But here it's, oh, well, we know this guy, but we need to be cautious and maybe kill his friends. Maybe kill his friends? Yeah, as you do. Seeing Rigel dissected and on that table was really shocking. That was a bit grim, a bit gory as well. Did that clue you in that it was all a dream? Yes and no. That th The timing is really good for that kind of fake out because um, we just had someone stay for two episodes, Shiana, and I thought, wait, are they killing off Rigel, and that's why we had her. And then this show takes chances that other shows I've seen don't. So I thought, oh, would they really do that? But then um, as it got worse and worse, I knew, okay, this can't be real because Dargo is off to some military base. Rigel's dead. It was getting um, to a point of no return. So something had to be up. Okay, so they didn't quite trigger your it's all a dream response at that point. It sort of did, but I was hesitantly hopeful. Triggered it. Yeah. They've You're earned hopeful? my they've earned my confidence. Um they have so many times they as in the writers have teased me with bad ideas and then they don't go where I think they're going with it. And so I was sitting there thinking, if this is all a dream, I'm going to be very angry and possibly hate this show and write it off. But I love what they did. So, and I love when they do that, when they play with my expectations. In the sense they were walking a fine line because no one really likes it was all a dream. Yeah, if this were all up to space madness or something, that would be so stupid. So the start of the episode, uh, they see Earth through the wormhole, and John's saying goodbye. I found that actually quite moving. He's been on quite a journey with these people, these aliens. Maybe I'm just a sucker for a sort of impassioned goodbye. People are crying or glassy-eyed. Yeah, that always gets to me. 
Even though I've seen the episode before, so I know what it's like. <laughs> but I'm still, uh, I'm still tearing up as well. Like, oh no, I have to say goodbye. He's going forever until forty minutes later. The timing of this episode is really good because I wouldn't have expected John to experience Earth or something like Earth or essentially Earth way further into the show. And here it's happening in the first season. And I love when they expedite things like that. Just in the last episode, I was afraid it was all going to be about investigating Durka. But then he admits himself, oh, yeah, I'm Durka. So I love that they don't drag things out that they could. You can only dangle a plot thread so long before it gets a little bit dull. And they tend to like to move things forward in the show. Not that this really moved anything forward, although it probably affected John quite a lot. Along those lines of moving things forward, it's over now with will they or won't they with Aaron and John. What with the the kissing and like kissing plus, you mean? Yeah, advanced kissing. Um, so that was really Aaron, right? Right. This okay. This is what annoys me about this episode. Why? Uh, why was it really Aaron? That seemed needless. So, his dad, alien, turns <laughs> up. And says, oh, yeah, your friends were helpful actors, but we generated Rigel's dead body. All they they have is memories. He has memories of Aaron, Rigel, yeah. Dargo. Use those. Maybe it, it was uh, too resource intensive to do that. And they thought, uh, let's just use the real ones. This episode pointed out a flaw in John's idea of bringing Aaron to Earth and that's she could never learn English. She could never be able to communicate with anyone because she has microbes so it, to her it would just sound like the word for house is house. Uh, yes, everything sounds sebation. That would be sad. No one could ever understand you despite your efforts. You, there may be a way, well, we don't really know what it's like to have microbes. Maybe you still hear the original language, but you understand it. Oh, yeah. And it also pointed out to me how cool it would be to be a human with microbes, and you could understand any language. That would be so fun and make traveling way easier. International cinema would be a lot better. <laughs> To invalidate all subs and dubs arguments. Ah, that would be wonderful. I think it would help bring a lot of peace to Earth as well. And or wars. Uh, I don't know. I think people would become overconfident in being able to understand other people. And they would think they're getting a perfect translation. But I bet stuff is still lost, even through microbes. They don't always oh, understand yeah. what John is talking about when he's making references to stuff. Yeah, there's actually people who talk the same language misunderstand each other all the time. Right. So, it would help, though. This episode did something well that the last episode did not. Um, and what was that? Use of slow-mo. Was there any slow in this episode? After John is shot with a trank dart. Oh, yes, yes. See, but that fits in. And plus, that was actual slow mo, wasn't it? I don't remember, but it made sense. There was a lot of strange uh, faded shots when he was talking to the ancient. That was kind of annoying. Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't a big fan of that. But that ancient, when he revealed his true form, sounds like Barack Obama. Or maybe it's just me. I can't say... I can't remember. I just remember him sounding like Crichton's dad. No, uh, his voice changes. After yeah, it, it does. I remember it changes, but I can't really remember. 
I didn't think Barack Obama. Okay, I did. Maybe I'll rewatch it and be surprised. When the ancient revealed himself, he looked terrible. He did. He looked like a puppet on a stick. <laughs> just wobbling up and down. He should have stayed as alien dead. With a ripped open chest, that looked cool. That was cool. They maybe should have gone for a more uh, abstract alien. I thought that's what they would do, because why not show something drastically different from a human form? Yeah, like a glowing ball of light. A d disco ball alien. There's a few Easter eggs in this episode. Was one of them the huge bug on the wall when John is saying bye to his dad at the safe house? Sorry, was there a huge bug on the wall? Did you not see that in the top left corner? What's huge? The bug. It's well, massive. No, I mean, well, how, quantify how, what, what is massive for a bug? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know. A couple inches or? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to go rewatch that. That's not an Easter egg, though. <laughs> it Unless was really distracting. You're implying that that was deliberately placed there as some hey, sort of I reference. Hey, we're in Australia, and we have big bugs. Check this out. I guess you could call giant insects an Australian Easter egg. Um, but that's not what I meant. There's actual a couple of Easter eggs in this episode. I have a feeling you're going to tell me them. Yes. Uh... When John walks into the bar with the pool tables. Yes. Uh, there's a blonde woman that looks like Alex. Uh, Who, hiding who's behind, Alex? Uh, okay, when he was with the Delvians, the blue, Rhapsody in Blue, and one of them was his ex-girlfriend. Oh, right, right, right. I don't think it was the same actress, but it looked a lot like her. The other Easter egg is right after that scene, he goes into the men's bathroom. Yes. And there's two guys at urinals and a guy at the sink. Yes. The guy at the sink was Anthony Simcoe, a.k.a. Dargo. Oh, nice. Out, out of makeup. And I think the guys at urinals were like the writer and the director or something. I wish I looked more closely. I know I could just Google what the guy who plays Dargo looks like, but I do wonder what he looks like just staring at him in the show. Not enough to Google him, I guess, but I am curious. He's a sort of blonde surfer dude. Oh, okay. He's Not seven, what I had in mind. He's like seven foot tall or something ridiculous. Okay, he's not actually seven foot tall. He's six foot uh, four. Close enough. Six foot five. Yeah, he's tall. Aaron had a lot of observation dialogue, which sounds like reversed English. It does. Is that what it is? Nope. It's not reversed English. How did they accomplish that? I don't know. Okay. But what her... I think it is reversed in some way. Or parts of it are reversed. But what her her lips match what she says, so I don't know what they do. Although I th think she maybe learned uh, the lip movements for the sounds rather than the actual dialogue. So she said the right thing, and they fit the Sebastian dialogue on top to match her lip movements. That has to be the case because well, she some... clearly didn't say that, right? This is how they revealed. There are truly aliens. They had the alien on a TV show. Yes. No. How how has she never seen Rain before? Yeah, I didn't like that comment. That's what I thought, but then I remembered she lived her whole life on spaceships. Oh, yeah. So she's only been on a handful of planets. We've seen most of the time she's been on planets, I would guess. She even talked about this, how home to her is spaceship. Yep. It does make sense. 
Ah, so I'm in the wrong. I should have appreciated that comment. It makes it seem like rain doesn't exist on other planets, which is yeah. entirely the wrong idea. What it means is Aaron isn't very good at living on a planet. Which is not how it comes across, though. Right, that's not the conclusion I came to, even though we're given all the information we need to reach that correctly. I did enjoy her joy in the rain, even though at the time I thought, well, she should know what rain is. Uh, it was all written in at the last minute because they were expecting a lot of sunny weather, but only the first day of the shoot was sunny, That which is the John landing on the beach. And the rest of the shoot was all torrential rain, so uh, they had to redo that scene and the scene where they're looking out the window. Oh, yeah. And she says it really is quite beautiful. Uh, although I guess they left the dialogue intact. It was supposed to be a sort of sunset instead of a thunderstorm. But I think it works pretty well with a thunderstorm. That's funny because... During that scene, I was thinking, oh, that's so great. They didn't default to a sunset like everyone else. Yeah, but sunsets are really beautiful. Thunderstorms are beautiful in their own way, too. And it's not overdone. Uh, yeah, if you get a real corker like the one they had there, that's pretty good. Oh, I love the sound. Just let the window open a crack so you can hear the sound of the rain and thunder. That's heaven. You, I don't know if you know what rain is. <laughs> yeah. It rains a lot in Scotland, so... Despite California's drought, yeah. we have experienced some rain here and there. 2011, 2008. <laughs> there are aliens that can control wormholes. I like seeing aliens that are very powerful and, and don't have malicious intent. They, all they want to do is cohabitate, and they're being careful about it. Yeah, powerful aliens are a lot of fun when they have weird agendas. It's frustrating if they're just angry or completely ambivalent. I like them to get involved, mix things up, be confusing. Confusing is good, because why should we understand everything that aliens want or do, or what drives them? These guys were a laugh. They were slightly immoral, used lesser life forms as sort of uh, lab rats in a weird experiment. But they were also quite nice about it. <laughs> really invasive. They took all his memories and studied him without consent. Yeah, they were quite unapologetic about that. Although, they did seem like nice guys. Hey, they complimented him, saying most species don't do so well. Yeah, which is surprising, because it really didn't make Earth look good. No, it seemed accurate, though. Um, I think it was a little on the dark side. I think, I would like to think that Earth would be slightly more reasonable. Hopefully we'll find out soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that would be cool. Sure. So if other planets don't do that well, they must do horribly. They kill them in, upon sight. They, must, they, they would have to, because that's almost what Earth did. They <laughs> yeah. Tranquilized them, captured them, and then they ended up killing one by accident, allegedly, and getting another one shipped off who's probably also killed or whatever. They didn't even take a day to kill Rigel. From what I could tell, they didn't specify, but it seemed like it was hours. The I, I don't think they would really just kill him yeah it's an old sci-fi trope we we have reasonably clever scanning devices nowadays 
like cat scans and x-rays and stuff the well, ana- anatomy of an alien is not anywhere near as valuable valuable as the information the alien would be able to tell us that's a good point i bet it was a case of they made him sick they didn't know how to make him better he yeah. died that like what's the saying never uh assigned to malice what you can assign to incompetence Oh, yeah, I would definitely go with incompetence if we're talking about humans. They're just using random tranquilizers on aliens. <laughs> How do they even know if they work? Right. They're completely different biology. That's a detail I really like, that it did make him sick, because how do they know how they'll react? They don't. How do they, how do they know how much to dose them with? Surely they just came up with guns with standard dosage. And... You see something like Rigel, it would need a much it would need a much smaller dose, surely. Or well apparently it didn't matter because he was allergic to it anyway. I wonder if that's why they chose Rigel, because he's smaller and he would be more affected. Because it's doubtful they would change the dosage. Uh it's probably because it was easy to show him in an autopsy. Yeah, that's a cool shot. Plus he's a sympathetic character because he's weak and small and the hero and he is the hero yes the secret hero of farscape i'm not being flippant he is like a really valuable crew member he's just a bit of a massive jerk as well i thought about that a lot during this episode because of the of the death scene or the scene that confirms he's dead whatever uh how important he is to the show and how I would miss him so much if they actually did kill him off. Yeah, he's like the pinch of salt that makes the meal better tasting. The show uh, exists in the ambiguities of its characters. Uh, so, yes, I would be very disappointed if Rigel was just killed off for for this It's a good episode, though. It is a good episode. But it's not worthy of Rigel's death. You'd have to die like a (laughs) domino. Do you have a quote from this episode that you'd like to share with us? It also led us to a familiar conclusion that the highest life form on the planet is also the most destructive. Yeah, yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. Whoops. Et cetera, et cetera. He's laying it down like it's some massive insight, but I think everyone pretty much agrees humans I... are pretty bad news for <laughs> Earth. We, we're well, trying. I'm not going to write off the human race. It's not... Well, I don't have evidence for this, but I don't think it's unique to humans. If you come to dominate a planet, I, I think you would... I have to you would be destructive um that's my primitive human brain i think you could all be harmonious living together uh but due to the way life forms evolve uh things like greed are useful traits so it's not suppose it's not surprising that the animal that dominates the planet has a mean streak of greed. Yeah, because and other negatives. They're useful. You need them. Or well, yeah. maybe humans don't need to be so greedy nowadays. But if we weren't so greedy in the past, would we have got here? No, we exactly. needed those traits to survive, and they served us as we evolved. But it doesn't scale well. Yeah, and we're stuck now. Now we're terrible. That's fine. If we can spread out into the universe, it won't matter again. It's only a problem when there's like one planet and about seven billion of us. And if you're watching in the future, maybe eight or nine billion. <laughs> oh God! No, we'll four kill billion. E- we'll kill all each other before that happens. Two hundred and eighty thousand. Well, are you just saying numbers now? Yeah, so many humans might be alive when someone listens to this in the future. 
That that would be a pretty bleak outcome, though. I'll go with uh, thirty-three million. That's also bleak. Yeah. If there are thirty-three million people alive or fewer, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll statistically probably be dead, but uh, others may want to share in your insights. Please. Uh... Resurrect us. Resurrect us. <laughs> Use these audio files and <laughs> reconstruct our personalities, yeah. please. Use, use our memories. You should have enough data, I think. I don't think we'd be the highest priority. Well, you know, when they get around to it. I'm not demanding I get to the front of the queue. Dude, you can go ahead of me. Ah, oh, you, you're so nice. Uh, anyway, none of this really has to do with Farscape, so we should uh, stop here and watch the next episode. Before we go, I have one more thing. Oh! Chiana wasn't in this episode much, but I want to quickly mention I love the physical choices the a actress makes. I just love walking her walk around and interact. It, it's how I feel when I'm watching um pilot or rigel i i love these little uh movements uh they really serve the character she's all spindly and off killer like she doesn't weigh anything it's so different from how the other uh, actors carry themselves sticks out in a good way at the same time seeing aaron in a summery dress look weirdly out of place yeah. Which is weird because um She's a person. She's a person. Wears Claudia Black probably clothes. wears dresses and stuff sometimes. Well, it's like a cartoon. You get so used to seeing them in the same clothes and then there's that one episode where they're in a bathing suit or whatever and it looks weird. Um I I okay. I t I can't think of an example of that. I might have just made that up. Maybe there will be bathing suits in the next episode. I doubt it. Let's find out. I'm going to say there are none. You're probably right. It's just a terrible hook. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. It also led us to a familiar conclusion. Which ones? But the highest life form on the planet is also the most destructive. Your humans would kill us. We do not have time for this kind of silliness. We got better stuff to do. I've got better stuff to do. So what will you do now? We got big problems to solve. And I'm confident we can solve them. But we're gonna have to focus on them. Not on this. So will I. Thanks very much, everybody.